morning, guys. It's Pastor Chris at True Life Way. Hope you've had a great day. Hope you've had a great weekend. Tonight I have a very important message to preach to you. In this life, we see labels everywhere. How many of y'all know that when you buy something or you get your medications, they always have a warning label on them? You know, the do's and the don'ts. You get power tools in the manual. They say, you know, do this, don't do that. And on your aerosol cans, you know, it may say something about extremely flame, uh, flammable, keep away from fire, keep away from flames and stuff like that. Their warning labels are everywhere and they exist in the hopes of keeping us, the consumers, safe, to keep you safe and also to protect the manufacturers so they can't say, well, you know, it didn't say anything about I shouldn't spray this spray paint on, uh, on open flame. It didn't say anything about that. And so it's to protect you and the manufacturer. But warning labels are great for those that read and obey the warning. I want you to hear this. This sermon is a very important sermon tonight. But they don't work if you don't read and obey the warning label. Right? If you get your medication, it may say you take one pill uh, in the morning, one pill at night. What, what happens if you take three pills in the morning and six pills at night? It may kill you. It's there for a reason. It's important that we follow the instructions on the warning labels. Remember, warning labels don't do anything if they aren't followed. And see, there was a certain man in the Bible that took a certain warning very seriously. And that man's name was Noah. He took heed to the warning that God was going to flood the earth. Because he could see that mankind had become so evil. If you want to follow along in, in your Bible, so let's turn to Genesis chapter 6. And we're going to start reading at verse 5. We have a couple, quite a few verses to read. And we're not reading from 6 through 30. We're going to be skipping around a little bit here. And we're going to be starting with Genesis 6, verse 5. And when you have it, say amen. 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 I heard an amen. And it says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repented me that I have made them. If you bow your heads, we're going to pray. Lord, we thank you for this night you give us, God. We thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. I ask that you let this message be a seed planted in someone's life today, God, that we will understand the warning signs that are before us, God, that we will read the warning signs and take heed and obey the warning signs, that we won't be so easily offended when the preacher tells us we shouldn't do this or we shouldn't do that, that we will understand that the preacher is trying to help, that he is trying to save us. And we love you tonight, God. And we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name pray. And the church said, Amen. 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 As I said, this is a very important sermon. A sermon not to take lightly at all. But verse 8, we're not reading it. But verse 8 says that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord because he was a just man. It says that his family is perfect. Meaning that they, you know, they tried to do the right thing. They followed God. You know, they were faithful. And God, looking down at his creation, he's seen the violence and the destruction. And we read in verse 6 that it repented the Lord that he made man on the earth. It repented him. And it grieved him at his heart. So it, and he's looking down. He sees the, the mankind that he created as wicked. And it says they continually had evil thoughts. And it broke his heart. Quite frankly, it just broke his heart. It's just like the parents looking down at their children making the wrong decisions, doing the wrong things in life. They want to try to help them. But it just breaks their heart. It's just like God looking down on us right now, watching His children on earth act a complete fool, hating on each other. You know, we talked about that in another sermon. Hating on each other, killing each other, lying on each other, thieving. It, he's, we are breaking His heart. Amen? We are straight up absolutely breaking His heart. That's how I imagine God's looking down on us right now. Just breaking his heart, watching his children fight. Let's pick back up on, at verse 11. 
The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. What does that sound like? That sounds like today, don't it? When God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. So God looking down, seeing the violence and the corruption of man, God told Noah that the end was near for all of them. He, he warned Noah that he was going to destroy them and then proceeded to tell Noah how to build the ark. He gave him set instructions. You do this with the ark. It goes this, it's going to be this high, this many rooms. You're going to build this ark. And then your family, and you're going to take the animals in there with you so that they may live. Amen. And behold, verse 7, And behold, I, even I do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, wherein is the bread of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. But with thee I will establish my covenant, and thou shalt come unto the ark, thou and thy sons and thy wife and thy sons' wives with thee. And of every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort shalt thou bring into the ark. To keep them alive with thee, they shall be male and female, of fowls after their kind, and of cattle after their kind, of every creeping thing of the earth after his kind. Two of every sort shall come unto thee to keep them alive. Thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded him, so did he. There was a warning label presented to Noah, and he did as the warning label read. The warning label in this case was God, right? In this case, it was the warning label from God saying, Look, I'm getting ready to flood the earth to kill the rebellion and, and the corruption of mankind that's that's on the face of the earth right now. He's telling Noah that that was his warning label. But you will be safe. You found grace in my eyes. You and your family your and your family's children, they have y'all have found grace in my eyes. Build an ark. And you and your family and every two of animals will go in there and you will be safe, right? He told Noah this, that you'll be safe. And, and Noah did. Verse 22 says that Noah did according to all that God commanded him to do. He didn't skip steps. The warning label lists that this is what you have to do and this is what he did. He did according to what God commanded him to do. He followed the warning label. Amen. He followed the warning label. For his obedience and faith in God, he would survive this terrible flood, him and his family. And a lot of people wouldn't have believed anything about this flood. You know, they would laugh and make fun of him, saying, you know, we've been hearing about the end of the world forever. We've been hearing about this going on forever. And that sounds like a lot of people today. I've heard people say this in, in you know, in actual life, my actual lifetime that we've been hearing about the end of the earth forever. And they just kind of downplay it. Like, we're just going to be here forever, working every day of our lives, watching children grow. One day it's all going to end, people. One day it's going to end. Don't we have to take heed to the warning labels all around us? Amen? Going to Genesis 7, verse 5. And Noah did according unto all that the Lord commanded him. And Noah was 600 years old when the flood of waters was upon the earth. Again, we see in verse 5 of, of uh, Genesis 7 that Noah did accordingly to what God commanded him to do. That's an important thing that you need to understand. He was faithful. He read the warning label. He took heed to the warning label. And you have to understand that today that the warning labels are there for a reason. The warning labels are there for a reason. They took shelter in the ark. And then eventually the rain began to fall. Let's go to verse 12. And the rain was upon the earth forty days and forty nights. And the blood and the flood was forty days upon the earth, and the waters increased and bare up the ark. And it was lift up above the earth, and the waters prevailed and were increased greatly upon the earth. And the ark went upon the face of the waters. And the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth, and all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. 
But 40 days, the flood upon the earth. And the Bible tells us in the King James Version that the waters increased greatly. And it puts a great emphasis on this flood and how the hills were covered. That's a great amount of water. Let's go to 20, verse 21. And all the flesh died that moved upon the earth, both of fowl and of cattle and of beasts, and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, and every man. And, in the, and whose nostrils was the breath of life of all that was in the dry land died. And all the flesh that God had made, all that that he had given the breath of life, fowl, cattle, beast, everything that creepeth upon the earth, and every man died. Amen? Verse 23, And every living substance was destroyed, which is upon the face of the, of the ground, both man and cattle, and the creeping things, and the fowl of the heaven, and they were destroyed from the earth. And Noah only remained alive, and they that were with him in the ark. The latter, per, the latter part of verse 23 is what I want you to listen to, to focus on in this sermon. Noah only remained alive, and them that were in the ark. Why? Because he read the warning label. He took heed to the warning label. He read and obeyed the warning label. You're going to hear this a lot in this sermon about reading and, and taking heed and obeying the warning label. Because it's important in our lives that we read and understand and obey the warning labels. Amen? That are all around us in our life. His family was saved from this great flood because they read and took heed to the warning label. God told Noah, I'm about to flood the earth. That was the warning to Noah to build this ark. And even God told him how to build the ark. To build the ark, to get in it, and you're going to be saved. They read and obeyed the warning label. But what if they hadn't have believed what Noah was telling them? They would have been of the man that died upon the face of the earth. Right? If they hadn't have believed what Noah was telling them, if they hadn't have taken heed to the warning label presented before them, it's important. The, the flood lasted for 150 days, and eventually the flood waters receded. And Noah and his family were able to come out of the ark. Let's go to Genesis 8, verse 11. Give you a few moments to get there, because Whitney has followed along. And verse 11 says, And I will establish my covenant with you, neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of the flood. Neither shall there, there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, This is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. Reading the warning label is what saved Noah and his family. Reading and obeying the warning label can save you and your family. Reading and obeying the warning label can save me and my family. And you know, it's, it's often been said that, you know, babies need to be born with a handbook or babies need to be born with a manual. The living word of God right here, that is your handbook. That is your manual. This is can be used as your warning label. Amen? Everything presented in this book is real. It is true. Amen? That is a warning label that is presented for us to use. A preacher out there preaching the Word of God is a warning label. A preacher that is teaching sin is sin, and the wage of the sin is death is a warning label. Preachers warning us all the time that Jesus is coming back and that we need to make ourselves ready. That is a warning label. And just as it was then, there's been times now we've been hearing about the end times forever. And some may not even take it serious anymore. They just think that this is the way it's going to be for the rest of whatever. 
But it's time that we start taking this seriously and thinking about our eternal place. Amen? It's almost like the boy who cried wolf. How many of y'all remember that story? The boy who cried wolf. You hear it so many times. You've been hearing it since you were knee high to the grasshopper that Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back. The whole time I grew up in church, I heard God is coming soon. But I still take this seriously. What I heard when I was eight, seven, and eight years old, I still been hearing it now that I'm 35 years old. But now the twist is I'm the one preaching it that Jesus is coming soon. And that we got to be ready. Because one day it's going to become a reality. And it's going to start happening. And no one's going to believe it. They're going to be caught off guard. Caught unaware. Amen. It's going to be too late by then. But I want to tell you about a dream I had as I get ready to close. It was a dream I had last night. And I don't remember even remotely what in the world was going on. You know how dreams can be crazy. There's times where you can have a dream that you're in your house, but it's not your house. It's someone else's house. And I don't even know where we were at. I was telling Whitney about this dream. But it seemed like we was on a hiking trip or something because there were teenagers were around me. I don't really know. And then all of a sudden this stuff, this strange substance starts to fall from the sky almost as if it was snow. But I want you to keep in mind in this dream, none of us are wearing jackets. We don't have the, the sock hats on. It's not cold out. But for some reason we see something snowing from the sky. And in my dream, there were those exclaiming, like, it's snow, it's snowing outside. But something wasn't right. And I remember in my dream, I reached down and I picked up this stuff and I looked at it like, this is like cotton. This ain't snow at all. It's like a cotton substance. And, and, and like I said, none of us were, were, were wearing jackets. It wasn't cold, so it was odd for it to be snowing at this time. And someone in my dream, I'm not mentioning names for reasons, but someone in my dream started running tests on this so-called this uh, this uh, cotton, trying to figure out what it was. They began running tests on it, but we never could figure it out quite what it was in my dream. And in my dream, I looked at the one running the test, and I said, "God's coming back soon." And he looked at me, and he says, "Yes, God is coming back." I want you to hear this next part. He said, yes, God is coming back. And at that moment, there was a loud sound of a trumpet blasting throughout the heavens. A loud, loud sound of the trumpet. And in that moment, immediately, we were transported to this like stadium-like thing. It looked like a giant stadium underneath a, a, a temporary tent of some sort. And you could, it, it was almost like in the rafters. You could look up, and there was like a, a cutout, a hole. And light began to shine through it. And then, and, and while I was walking out, and there was like partitions, and I walked out and I looked up, and you could hear people saying, "There's Jesus! There's Jesus! Jesus is coming!" And as I looked up at this large opening, I could see the light getting brighter and brighter. As you know, it looked like Jesus was making his way. He was about to make his appearance. He was getting close. And then at that moment, I woke up. I woke up before Jesus was able to come out, so I don't I didn't get to see what happened after that. But I woke up looking around the room. Because you know how dreams can be so they can feel so real at times. They can be they feel so real. And I was looking around the room, everything was normal. Whitney was still laying in bed. Everything was just fine. No, nothing was but when you wake up from that dream like that. Like, what in the world? Because it felt so real. And the it, it was crazy, the fact that the sound of that trumpet, how loud that trumpet was. And it wasn't something that just kept playing. It was almost like a like, oh, like an old movie when they, they, the king comes in. And it's just like, doo, 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 or something like that. It didn't even last a long time, but it was so loud. And it was sounding like a declaration of that I'm coming back. Because it wasn't just a do to do. It was a proclaimed. It was a big sound. Amen. 
There was no doubt in my mind in this dream that Jesus was indeed coming back. The sound that the trumpets made, a declaration. Amen. It was a, it was a sound un, I've never heard of in my life. And you may say, well, it was a trumpet, but it had a, defined, a, a definitive sound to it. That you just knew I'm coming back. Amen. It was different. I'm telling you to take heed and read the warning labels that are in front of you. When you're driving down the road, you see signs all the time that says shark curve up ahead or red light or stop ahead. These signs are there to show you what's coming up. That's what's in this Bible right now. It's telling you what's on the way and how to be prepared for it. Amen. You've got a warning label right here. That preacher that you go to church that stands behind that pulpit every day trying to tell you that Jesus is coming. I tell you to listen and take heed to what that crazy man says. Amen. He's not up there just trying to say words. He's trying to prepare you. Read the signs that are before you. We don't know when he's coming back. It could be next five minutes. It could be the next 20 seconds. It may not be for another 150 years. We don't know. But what we do know is that we need to be ready. We need to read and obey the warning signs that are before us. And I'm telling you, this in today's generation, it seems we are so easily offended that Somebody says something like, you can't judge me. Don't judge me. Your pastor's not trying to judge you. He's trying to look out for you. If you've got a pastor that will tell you you're living in sin, he's a blessing to you. Because anyone that won't is a coward. Amen? I say it like I, feel, like, like I see it. A true pastor's going to do anything he can. He don't want to see you burn in hell. Amen? He's not trying to judge you. If I've ever said anything in a sermon that you was offended about, if it's in the Word of God, I have no apologies. None whatsoever. If I'm preaching the Word of God, amen? I'm trying to help people. I want to see everyone make it to heaven. And, and this delusion that just because you was a nice person, you're going to make it into heaven, that's not the case. It's important. That we read and we obey the warning labels. Amen? Just like it's children and you're a parent. And you've been cooking something on the hot stove. Or you've got something cooking on it right now. And you see your child about to reach out and touch it. Are you going to let them touch that stove? Are you seriously going to let them touch that hot stove? No. You say, no, don't touch that. That is hot. Well, that is what this pastor is trying to do. I'm trying to keep you from touching the hot stove. Amen? I'm trying to keep you from facing the consequences of burning and eternal damnation. Amen? That dream is a wake-up sign. It's a wake-up call that we've got to be ready. I don't know when he's coming back, but I know I've got to be ready. I've got to get my family in order. I've got to get my life in order. Amen. It's important. Don't be offended at what your pastor's telling you, especially if it lines up in the Word of God. You need somebody that's going to fight for you to tell you, hey, you're not supposed to do that. And then when you say, well, only God can judge me, that should be the most scary thing. Because indeed, God is the only one that can judge you. The very one that can cast your soul into hell. Amen? If you don't take heed to what the pastor is trying to protect you from, you will suffer the consequences. The wages of sin is death, hell, fire, eternal damnation. We must make ourselves ready. I don't know when he's coming back. But he's coming back soon and we have to be ready. Amen? We have to be ready. I have to get my family ready. I have to get myself ready. 
We have to make every effort we possibly can to know for 100% fact that when that sky splits open, we've got nothing to worry about. Amen? It's important that we read and obey the warning labels. One more verse, and I'm getting off here. Matthew 24, 36. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Nobody knows when he's coming back. According to Scripture, no man, not even the angels of heaven, know when he's coming back with the Father only. So until then, what do we do? We read and we obey the warning labels that have been put in our lives. You would do it. It's no different. Before you take that medication, your blood pressure medicine, or whatever it may be, before you take it for the first time, you read the instructions on how you're supposed to take it. Read the Word of God. It's going to give you the instruction on how to prepare yourself for eternity. Amen? Think about that. The Word of God will prepare you for eternity. Lord, we love you tonight, God. We thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. Lord, I just ask that you will let this message really open up some eyes around us, God, that we will know and understand that we need to read and obey the warning labels that you have placed in front of us, that we will listen to the pastor you have set before us, and as long as they are preaching the truth from your word, that we will understand, and we, will, we won't be so easily offended, that we will take uh, instruction from them and that we will we will listen to what they say because we understand that they're trying to help us and lord i just ask if there's anyone that's listening to this right now god if they if they don't know who you are Lord, that you will come in tonight and show them and introduce yourself to them god and that they will grow and they want to know more about you that they won't stop that they'll always have a craving and a desire to want to learn and to do more for you and I ask that you be with me today and my family be with True Life Way that we will, even though we become discouraged, that we will not stop, that we will keep going, that we will keep preaching your word. Because if we don't, there's going to be so many people that won't hear your word, that won't hear the truth, that won't hear the gospel, that we will keep preaching truth. Amen. And we thank you, Lord, for that. And we love you tonight, God. And we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name I pray. And the church said amen. 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 I hope you got something out of this sermon. I know it, 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 you know, it turned into kind of a scary end time sermon, but we need to know time is short. But we don't know when he's coming back, but that's why we make ourselves ready. We read and obey the warning labels. Amen? The warning labels that are before us. The word of God, your pastor, your church, your godly friends. Amen? Be careful about you know who you surround yourself with. Well, that's a whole other sermon. But just please, please, please read and obey the warning labels in front of you. It's important, and your very soul depends on it. Amen? I just wanted to say, if you ever have questions, if you need somebody to pray for you, pray with you, you can always get in touch with us at True Life Way. I've always got, whether I'm at work or not, I've always got a phone near me. Now, I may not be able to answer it right away when you call or text or whatever, but I will get back with you if you call and, you know, hey, brother, I, I need some advice, I need some prayer, whatever it may be. But I, we want to be there for you. We want to encourage you. Amen? That's what we're here for. And with that being said, we love you guys. God bless you, and we will see you on the next one. Take care. Yeah.